right, Big Blue Report here with Jonathan and Casillas. I'm your host, Randy Zaya. JC, man, first off, we've been you and I've been talking about doing this for a long time. We've we're finally we're finally putting it together. And for those who have who have forgotten who the man who was who's on the call with me right now is, this is two time Super Bowl champion, uh, Jersey native, and great New York Giant. You hear him right now uh, doing the free games for the Giants. His name is Jonathan Casillas, and he is here with us now and we're going to be here all season breaking down the game talking giant football jc's going to enlighten us too on some things as a former player that us both in the media and the fan base may not fully understand so and let's so let's kick this thing off let's kick it off the right way first off you're, you're sort of back in the fold with the giants right now doing some pre-game talk what's what talk about being back in the fold and just being around that football that football atmosphere again yeah, it feels good. You know, uh, I wasn't really in the building a lot because of COVID the last two years. Before that, I was doing a little bit of like post game stuff. I did a couple of training camp things, um, you know, media wise. And then two years, I kind of went ghost because I didn't fall in that vaccination realm, you know. But now I'm back and, and it feels good, like just to be in the facility again. The Giants is a class A organization. You know, we just got to get the wins to to match up with the organization because from the top down, I feel like, you know, it's a class A organization. Now you got a coach like Dayball coming in who's having guys buy into the program. For, I feel like for the first time since probably Tom Coughlin, you know, so it's good to be around. It's good energy. Everybody's happy. I saw a couple of guys. I'm like, man, y'all looking young. Saquon being healthy got everybody looking young over there. <laughs> I, now, were you the only one who was thinking when um, Daniel and Tyrod both went down, uh, they should get uh, Chad Powers in there? They should definitely have gotten Chad Bro. Powers. <laughs> First, there was there was absolute panic in the, in this like up in the press box when we saw Tyrod in the game because we're like, whoa, what's going on? Where's Daniel Jones? We didn't hear nothing on, on the injury report. Nobody said anything. So we're sitting there. I'm like, I'm hollering at Paul Latino, like, Paul, what, did you hear anything? Like, what's going on? What did you hear? You know, did you hear anything? I was talking to uh, uh, Madeline Burke and all those guys up there. I'm like, what is going on? Why is Tyrod in the game? And and he's, he's over there. It looked like he was healthy. I didn't see him working on his ankle or anything. But then you found out that it was an ankle injury or a foot injury. And then Tyrod get knocked out the game. And it's like, Okay, now who do we have to play quarterback now? Good old number 26. We have to suit it up. <laughs> Go ahead and direct step that thing. Look, the guy can do everything, man. Look, I'm so happy for that dude because, you know, getting hurt early in your career like that can be so overwhelming to you. And then you start questioning yourself. And I think we might have even seen that last year before he got hurt again, kind of like doubting himself and really not as confident in his ability as he once was. And I feel like, oh, that's out the window now. This dude, he might even be more explosive than he was as, as a rookie and coming out of Penn State. Like, he's a tremendous talent. I'm so glad that he's healthy, not just for the Giants, not just because I'm a fan, but because, like, as a man, you know, as a man, as a, as a man that's providing for his whole family and, you know, setting his legacy for what Saquon Barkley is and who he is, I'm just so happy for him in that regard, man. And he's playing lights out football right now. Well, and this brings up a good question. And this is something I've asked in the past too, because again, I've been a lot in the basketball world, but I've seen people come back from ACL injuries and knee injuries. Usually it takes a good timeline, not, not just to get yourself in shape, but once you get into shape and then it's getting yourself back into football shape and getting back to doing the things that you're good at, you've had injuries before you've had a bounce back. Is there a major difference from getting back into shape and then getting back into football shape? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's only one way to get into football shape, and that's playing football. You know, like you can't replicate football without doing football. Like there's no way to do that. You know, like basketball, you can go to the court and hoop at, you know, LA Fitness, wherever, you know, <laughs> you can you can do games back and forth and get good runs in. You can't hurdle that you have to overcome any time that you get hurt. You know, you come back and then you realize like, man, I'm not the same guy, you know, and it might be 1% off, 1% less explosive, 2% less explosive for a guy that's pushing, let's, let's say Saquon and Odell, right? Saquon, I feel like he's hundred percent back, maybe even more. I think Odell with his accumulation of injuries, 
he's maybe 3% less explosive. And I'm just throwing a number out there. 3% less explosive than he once was. But that's why you're not going to see Odell taking 80-yard slants to the crib anymore. He's not as explosive as he used to be. He lost a step, which is, look, some people can adapt and play. I learned how to play with not being as explosive as I once was. I had a lower body injury, uh, of a Liz Frank injury early in my career. And when I came back, I wasn't as fast. I wasn't as explosive. My flexibility was off. My range of motion from my hips all the way down to my ankles was off. And you got to learn how to play with this new body that you got. You know, some guys with the knees, like you come back and it's like the knees, the foot, the ankle, those are so critical parts of your body that has literally everything to do with every movement that you that you make on the football field, that when you do some type of surgery and they cut you open and they fix it or they put something in there, whether it's, uh, you know, screws, plates, even sutures, like they change the, the makeup of what you are as a as an athlete. Some people can respond and bounce back. We've seen Adrian Peterson rush for 2000 yards after having ACL surgery, which is insane. I think a lot of that, though, maybe even 80 percent of that is mental. Getting over that mental hurdle of I'm not the same guy. I got to figure out how to be the best I can with this new knee that I got. And mind you, I'm talking about microscopic minor surgery. It's yeah, still that's... they cut you open and then you come out a little bit different, a little bit different every time. And to see Saquon and anybody come back to full strength after being, you know, having, I guess, ser uh, several injuries in a row year after year to come back and look the way he's looking, like you got to tip your hat off to him. Yeah, and not only that, but, you know, during the off season when we were doing media sessions with him, he had his, he could tell he has a chip on his shoulder and he's tired of hearing all the criticism. And right now he's playing great football. He is playing great football. But the, the, the thing is with him playing great football and being an MVP candidate, Right now, the rest of the offense needs to catch up to Saquon. Right now, right now, they need to catch up. Uh, there's something that you said earlier I just want to go back to. Uh, because you brought in the fact of buying into Dable's system. And when you played for Tom Coughlin, and then after Tom left, you buying into um, Ben McAdoo's system, you guys were stuck in a little bit of a weird situation going out of that 2015, going into that 2016 season. 2015, you guys had a lot of close games. You guys started off, uh, I think, four and two. And then you guys were just having that string of lose, sort of losing games in the last minute where there was not being able to make a play on defense, not, not able to make a play on offense. And then 2016, the ball started bouncing the Giants' way a little bit, winning some of those close games. And, of course, the Green Bay game in the playoffs, which you and I have talked about in other interviews, you felt that that Hail Mary pass at halftime – change the face of the organization yeah. from the, from that point. So how important is it to sort of buy into the system and not sort of fall into, I guess, past habits from other systems? Well, it's, it's just like, you know, any job that you have, you know, like you can reflect on other jobs that you've had and other experience that you have, but to get the most out of what you're doing, you got to be fully bought in to what is going on, you know, what, whatever it is that you're doing. And specifically for football, when you have a coach, a coach coming in and he's trying to establish culture and he's trying to establish identity within the team, if you don't have everybody buying in, there is no such thing as a trickle down effect. It'll get stopped somewhere because the players have a lot of power. You know, when it comes to, to the NFL, they have a lot of power. And if you got a top dog in the, in the, in the, in the locker room that's not bought in, other guys are going to see that. And they're going to be like, oh, if he's not bought in, I'm not going to be bought in. But it doesn't look that way with the Giants. I may be in years past with the other coaches that we've had over the last five or six years because we've had, what, this is our fourth coach since Coughlin, right? Yeah. Fourth coach, which is like – Coughlin only been gone his last year was in 15. That ain't that long. No. You know, that's a lot of coaches to be having, you know, in and out the building, you know, and the only person that's been there the whole time was Sterling Shepard, you know, and my heart reaches out for him. That, that guy can't catch a break, you know, and I feel like he was having a good year this year and, 
you know, with the struggles we've been having at receiver, you saw that one bright spot at Shepard, like good old right, reliable Shep is there for us, you know, but yeah. again, another guy who kind of had that injury problem throughout his career. I had it. Odell kind of has it. Uh, Saquon, hopefully knock on wood, hopefully that's over with, you know, but playing football, you know, they come, you know, with, with the, with the territory, you know, my heart's out for him. Cause I know, you know, it meant a lot for him being back out there coming off that Achilles injury and for him to go back out running down the field, like by himself, just pops his, his ACL. Just like, what the heck is going on, man? You know what the last two games with all the injuries felt like and all the craziness felt like it reminded me back of the 2017, that game against the Rams when we lost all the receivers in one game. We lost Chargers. Them. Oh, sorry, the Chargers. I thought because yeah. that Chargers. was the game I got hurt too. You got yeah. hurt in that game, and then you also yeah. Odell getting hurt. Shep went down. Three receive, all four receivers got hurt in three and Dwayne, the season, and Dwayne Harris too. Three and out you, for the season. Yeah, that was, was insane. Yeah, like, like we didn't have no chance after that. Well, yeah, that was it. Was such a weird. It was such a weird time. It was such a weird time. Um. Let's let's take we're just gonna take a quick uh, a quick time out here for one second. We'll be right back with Jonathan Casillas talking more here on the Big Blue Report. All right, back here on the Big Blue Report. Ryan Darlington is joining Jonathan Casillas and I right now talking Giants football. And let's go back to the game this past Sunday um, and, and sort of the season so far since this is our first episode. Uh, JC. Look, Daniel Jones, I've been I've been on the skeptical wagon with him. Um, I, I think, and Ryan is laughing at me because of that, but the skeptical wagon, and it's very, very simplified for me, is right now, I feel that he's playing with the weight of the world on his shoulders. I really do. He's working for a contract. They didn't pick up the fifth-year option. They're not going to franchise tag him because the franchise tag number is in the 30s. So, so I just can't – I. I I can't see that. And so far what I've seen is yes, they're winning games three and one, but he, and he's running the ball very, very well, but his passing numbers, you will be seeing like 23 for 32, but only a hundred and something yards. You, you want to see more now, I'm, the, you know, Ryan has brought up to me off air before about that might be the, the design. That's how his offense is designed where he's not going to throw you no know, 25, 30 yard bombs, but he's just going to be a game manager. Look, you've played with Eli Manning, you've played with Drew Brees, uh, and you played with Tom Brady. Yep. So you played, you played with three Hall of Famers right there. What is your take so far of Daniel Jones? This year or in general? I, I think you know what? Let's let's start with the overall package and then segue into this year. Well. Look, I, I watched him practice that first year when Eli was still at the helm. And I was very impressed by a, a seven ball that he threw and a nine ball that he threw. And I was like, OK, the kid got an arm. He can throw it. He can spin it. Honestly, I'm most impressed with Daniel Jones. I feel like by his poise, how he speaks to the media. He sounds very, very mature and to win in New York is very difficult. To play quarterback in New York is almost impossible. Eli did it for so long. That's why he will forever be loved. And he was a stud. You know, not always the prettiest, but when it came down to the media, he was stone-faced, straight answers, took responsibility. And I feel like that is what Daniel Jones is. It may not look pretty on the field, but... With Dayball at the helm, I feel like he's going to change the game plan according to who we're playing against, which sometimes offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators, they don't do that. And that can come back and harm them. And you're not really maximizing what you can really get out of your players. Now, the game we played last week, the Chicago Bears, they 15 pass attempts a game, like – we knew we wasn't going to go in there and have a shootout with them. It was going to, who was going to be able to stop the run? Who can, you know, steal a possession, get, you know, win the turnover battle, who can get the quarterback on the ground. And the number one thing who can run the football. That was the number one thing for me. That's what I saw. We used a lot of Daniel Jones last week and my number one knock on him, which he, I don't think 
I, I want to say he has improved, but he hasn't. He always gets hit. Like yeah. whenever he runs with the football, he even when he runs out of bounds, he still gets hit. And people are learning, like, I can hit this dude because he doesn't really understand how to get out of the way of danger. And I just watched Mahomes the other night, and I'm watching him, and I'm just like, this dude doesn't get touched. And he runs with the football all the time. No. Like, Lamar Jackson takes a couple hits. He understands kind of how to take hits better than I feel like probably any player in the NFL. But Mahomes doesn't take hits. He runs out of bounds, and when he needs to fight for that third down, he will. He will do it, and he'll take a shot. But Daniel Jones, he'll break a run, and he's, like, running out of bounds, and he'll get hit. And it's like, bro, go out of bounds. Don't look like you're going – go out of bounds. Because, number one, if they think they can hit you and you're out of bounds, that's a flag. That is a penalty, and we're going to get that call. But if you're lollygagging, trying to get out of bounds – and they hit you and your feet is still in bounds. I don't care what it looks like. That is a legal play. And they can hit you as hard as they want to, you know? And that, that was always my fear for him is like, the fear for him literally went to Tyrod. Tyrod got knocked out. And not to say that he didn't know, but Tyrod was fighting for the first down. That's a huge difference <laughs> in what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about literally sacrificing your body to get a first down. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about regular run plays where you get a first down and there are defenders coming in on you and you don't protect yourself. You don't slide. You don't try to get out of bounds. You literally take the hits and it's like, the kid's durable. He is, even though he got an ankle right now yeah. because he's taking some shots. Remember that, that one-handed, they did the little Philly special, which was a lunatic call to call in the <laughs> middle of the field. And then everybody was like, oh, Daniel Jones with the one-hand catch. But did you see what happened to him right after he caught the ball? He got lit up. He got smashed. Mm-hmm. I didn't care about the catch. I'm like, why are we running this in the middle of the field to let your quarterback literally get demolished by the safety? Yeah. Like, the kid's adorable. He's taking a lot of shots, bro. Yeah. Like, like, not just sacks. Hard running plays with running backs take hard shots from linebackers and safeties and from D linemen too. And I'm just like, man, please, Daniel Jones, slide. Please yeah. get out of bounds. <laughs> That's me every time he right takes off. I'm like this. Oh, my God. How many times well, have the, I said that? <laughs> and, and listen, the guy's been running for his life for four years. You'd think that by now somebody would have said, hey, man, you got to protect yourself a little bit, right? I know what it's like to want to ingratiate yourself to the team. You're giving up your body. You're putting it all out on the field. You're doing your best to make, a, make an impact for your team. But for God's sake, somebody teach this man how to slide. Every time he goes out, I'm just, I'm holding my head like this and yeah. like, oh my God, what's going to break now? Right. Just put your feet forward. That's like, <laughs> you, you, well, you got to know how to do it. Feet, so you got to wonder, if, is it a coaching fail? Is this a coaching fail? Like, are they just not teaching them how to not take a hit? Right. Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. JC, I got to ask you too, just off topic with that. How many times did you, uh, Light up a good quarterback after uh, Ooh, being able to. So <laughs> that's, that's oh, man. Look, I, I, I've done that. I, I've I've been on both sides of it. So I've been on a three, <laughs> I've been on three sides of it. Right, good, nice hit on the quarterback. Mm. Got a guy Aaron Rodgers good a couple of times. Yes. Um, on the other side of it, I thought Cam Newton was running out of bounds. Right, so <laughs> I eased up because you know they they don't play with right on the line. You know, like right on the mm. line. They're going to give that to the quarterback. So I eased up, and Cam didn't ease up. <laughs> Cam yeah. is, is a lot in. bigger than me. Yeah. Even though was I it? play linebacker, Cam is 255. <laughs> and I felt all of that all yeah. here. I was like, ah. <laughs> and I flew. And I flew. And then the other one was getting a beat on Russell Wilson. He threw the ball, and I, like, tried to keep my face out. And I had to face-to-face, helmet to helmet. And it wasn't even that bad, but you can't even, like, you know, and this was back then when you, it was a little more acceptable back then, a little back, you know, not that long ago, Randy, I, I didn't play that long ago, <laughs> but you know, the rules have been changing. I came in the league at 2009 and y'all remembered our favorite show. Every guy's favorite show was jacked up. <laughs> Seeing guys get smashed. Get lit that was up. like amazing. Now they don't do that anymore. They don't promote yeah. big hits anymore. Sure. But there's still a lot of big hits happening in this game. That's for sure. 
was the Cam hit the the game against uh were you, were you remember the Giants at that point? The Cam No, hit? no, I was I was with um I was with the Saints. Yeah, I was with the Saints. Young Cam Newton. Yeah. Young Cam. Um let's put a let's put a bow on the Chicago game here. Um this was an ugly win. I think you I think that's the best way of saying it. That's one of those games where you know, it's it's fireworks are going off on the last couple of plays and <laughs> last couple plays of the game there when they're doing throwing laterals fireworks are going off in the stadium people are sort of holding on tight uh it felt like that lateral was going on forever mike go on i <laughs> uh, just i <laughs> it was it was one of those things and there was a sigh of relief in the giants locker room after the game that i can i can confirm that uh we spoke to um uh, Shane Zimus, uh, you'll hear audio for, from him in, in a couple minutes. Uh, from this perspective, now moving forward, now as, as we head into London against the Green Bay Packers, which, by the way, uh, JC, thank you for um, making sure you tackle and you hit Aaron Rodgers very hard. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. I am not an <laughs> I am not an Aaron Rodgers fan. Randy's uh, got so, little love, little I, love for Aaron Rodgers. I, I, when it comes to Aaron Rodgers, I have anger issues. So, JC. That you doing that makes me love you even more. I, I owe you a drink just for doing that in the past. <laughs> uh, so, uh, with that being said, though, we are we're heading out to London for this upcoming week. Um, the quarterback carousel for the Giants is sort of up in the air. Uh, Daniels had a couple good days of practice um, as as of this recording. I think Davis Webb is being promoted into the 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 main 53 um you're no you're no stranger to davis webb jc yeah uh, what have you seen on a, you know back from davis during his rookie season when he was here you were with him what did you what was your first impression of davis webb well he's if i feel like he's a student of the game you know like he always was on top of everything like you, when you play that third spot that quarterback third spot, you know, even the second uh, string quarterback, you run a lot of scout team. So you run with the first defense a lot. And the, the defensive guys always experience the backup quarterbacks. And Davis Webb, look, he always had a good command of the huddle. And this was his rookie year. So he's been around the league a little bit. He's been with Dayball. He's, you know, he's, he's experienced as a backup, but how much? How many snaps have Davis Webb played in the NFL? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. So it's like, no matter what I think of him, no matter how he's practiced, he's never played. So who knows what he looks like under the lights? We know what Tyrod looks like. He's a. I think he's a solid quarterback in the NFL. He could be a starter on a lot of teams. And when he came in the game, look, I love that ball he threw to Slayton. Mm -hmm. I loved yes. it. It was in double coverage, but so what? Slayton in the his rookie year, Slayton's rookie year, ball. he would have at least. And the the thing that got me and and we were all up in the booth like, he didn't even compete for the ball, right. bro. Yeah, I, I was talking to Monty Tumor. I was like, Monty, like, that's on a receiver. He was like, absolutely. Like, and I told this to my my receiver over in New Brunswick High School. He's a freshman, complaining about the quarterback not really hitting him. I said, bro. You know he don't have the best and most accurate arm, right? You know that, right? He said, yeah. So when that ball gets thrown in the air and it's you and somebody, that's your ball. Yeah. That is your responsibility to catch it or make sure the other team doesn't catch it. I don't care where that ball is at. If it goes anywhere near you, that is your responsibility. It's your ball to catch or break up. And I think these receivers – for the Giants, look, I'm not saying the reason why they're not playing as much as we want them to, the Galladay's and even 86, 89. I don't even want to say these guys' names because I don't yeah. even know what's going Like, I really don't know what's going on with them. I love Kadarius Tony. I think yeah. he's one of the most explosive players in the league. And then Slayton, I was all on the Slayton rookie train. Yeah. I'm like, where are these guys at? And I am think we kind of you know, talk ourselves to death with 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 Galladay, you know, for the contract we paying him. And like, I don't know, man, it just looked like the dude don't want to be, I don't know what's going on, but Daniel Jones, I feel like from the crop that he has to throw the ball to, I feel like he's playing pretty well. I don't think he's playing great, but he's winning games and wins are hard to come by in the NFL. And, I mean, you look at the receivers that he does have out there to throw to. The guys that are getting playing time, Sills, 
um, Richie James, Richie you know, those James. guys, those are the ones I have to believe that, you know, Dayball's been true to his word from day one, saying what I see on a practice, when I see you putting into this system, when I see you giving your all, those are the guys I'm going to give the chance to out on the field. And so if he doesn't see, if he sees what you saw, right? Darius Slayton not making a play on that ball in the end zone. If he sees Galladay half-assing it on the, in practice, if he sees, you know, these Kadarius Tony or whoever, not really putting in as much effort as Sills, as Richie James, as those guys, then you're going to see Sills and James all year long, right? I yeah, mean, it seems I'm, like that's... I'll take it, you know. If, yeah. you're, if you're out there practicing your butt off, you know, you out there mm -hmm. working hard, you deserve to play, you know? Yep. And I, I just, I'm a little confused about what you said, Ryan, because I listened to Mike Kafka's interview about mm -hmm. Kenny Galladay, and he's like, he's doing all the right things. And I'm like, how is he doing all the right yeah, things? He can't he be. Yeah. Two plays? He can't be. I don't he, understand. Like, what is, yeah. what, I feel like something is not happening. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on because I, these I, guys, these those three guys, we're talking about Slayton, Kadarius Tony, and Galladay. We're talking about these three, not the other guys, just those three guys. It's like, Everybody in Giants Nation expected big years from these guys. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. No, you're 100% right. But I want to throw one thing out there, too. And you know, you've been through this, too. When there's a change of coach and change of culture, sometimes, and especially when there's a change of GM, sometimes the GM tries to flush out the guys that were not his guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. and, and so right now, you have Galladay, which was a Gettleman signing, which was a, now it's turning out to look like a really bad signing. But I mean, we got Saquon out of it, so I know. Sure like, sure. I know we don't like Gettleman collectively, you know. <laughs> but he got twenty six. He's probably the best running back in the league. I'm just saying, right? But, but he's got also, the best numbers this year, right? But if you remember when Gettleman got there, he took all of Reese's guys and he took all of Mackage's yeah. guys. He said he, he kicked us he flushed out. Them. He got rid of he, us. He got he flushed. Of he flushed everybody. And you know they sort of did the same thing when when uh, Sean and and Dable got here. They flushed a lot of Gettleman's guys and they couldn't do it all at one shot. I'll tell you what the conversation's probably like right now. Kenny Galladay probably said, I would love for you to trade me. And the Giants are looking at him going, we would love to trade you. What we would, who? Yeah. yeah, well, who's going to take that contract? Well, and, <laughs> and, and, then, and then the next con the next part of the conversation is, I would love for you to release me. We would love to release you, but it hurts us against the cap. Well, why don't you send me home like you did Golden Tate? We don't want to do that because then it's going to make us look bad, like we're not giving you the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Look, Slayton... I have seen Slayton pretty much all offseason long. I've been to these practices. I'm listening to him talk. He sounds like a beaten guy. He reminds mm. me he, he reminds me of a couple other players who were here during Shermer's time, who are still here, who got buried under judges system and now getting another shot with Dable. Guys like O'Shea and Zymus. Guys like, um, you know, look, McKinney, McKinney was a standout when he got here, but now he's starting to come into his own as a leader on this team. But there was a lot of times where, because you had Bradbury and you also had uh, Logan Ryan, McKinney was always not even close into that conversation as far as leadership. Mm -hmm. McKin McKinney is is growing up before our eyes and is an yeah, asset but he, to this team. He's, he's still young. And when you're young, yeah. it's really hard to, like, try to – I won't even say try to. It's more like you're just playing your part. You know, you got to follow before you lead. You know, and when I stepped into the Saints locker room, you know, I didn't say nothing for three years. Like I kept my mouth <laughs> shut. We had the leadership there. And yeah. I was just learning and learning and learning and learning. And then when I got to, you know, uh, Tampa Bay, I was four years in. I got taught by Vilma and, and Roman Harper and Drew Brees wow. and Jeremy Shockey. Like, these are all guys, uh, Will Smith, rest in peace. Like, these are guys that, like, I, like, looked up to, like, like in, like, just trying to watch everything that they did. I didn't do nothing leadership wise for years. Like when I say that, like I, I I did, but like you you couldn't tell from the outside because we had secure big five big time bona fide leaders. And when you do, when you have a team like that, you let them lead and you play for them. You play through them, you know. And when you have guys like that, who I feel like I think Julian Love was kind of stepping into that mm -hmm. that mold, being an undraft. He's undrafted, right? Undrafted. I believe guy? so. I believe he's undrafted. I hate, I hate not knowing that. Like I feel like I know that, but I don't know for sure. Look that up, please. Because I'm, I'm an undrafted right now. guy, I'm and I got right a now. special, you know, I got a special place in my heart for my undrafted guys.
mm-hmm. you know, for him to having, you know, being in different regimes, to him basically coming into his own and being a bona fide player for the Giants and being one of the better players on defense. So, yep. uh, fourth round pick, pick the hundred and eight. And 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 look, when we got rid of Bradbury, I was like, oh man. To the Eagles, I'm like, oh, yeah. Man. To the Eagles, we're seeing and, him twice a year. And and look, the Eagles. Let's not even have that conversation until we get those guys on the roster because that's a scary conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but when we got rid of him, I'm just like, what are we doing? And 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 I know this because it's happened. I played on different teams, a whole bunch of different coaches. Like you said, Randy, when coaches and GMs get in, they want to establish their own culture. Right. Mm-hmm. People was I remember when Odell got uh what he got traded. Odell yeah. got traded, right? Mm-hmm. When Odell got traded, they let Landon go for free, snacks go, they didn't resign me, they just let guys go. People were so confused, like, how could you let Odell go? You just signed him. And I said, the the reason why you said it earlier, the reason why, because when a coach comes in, a GM comes in, number one thing is establish culture. Right. You look at Odell. Odell is culture in itself. Literally, (laughs) he's culture in itself. So if you have any type of inclination that that culture person like that big person is not on board, you got to let him go. You got to let him go. You you (laughs) can't you can't insult the owner of the team after you, he signs you to a big contract and expect to stay with that team. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just, it doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. And, and look, there's like, you mentioned before about, you know, the good soldier that Eli was and how da- and Daniel is sort of following that mold that Eli, Eli had, you, know, you think about the lack of culture that Daniel has actually had here. Right. You know, like Maris said, it, I wouldn't the, say lack It's just, Different. Mustard. It's yeah. just all over the place. There's so yeah. much well, different stuff coming at him. But that's what Maris said during Joe, Joe Sean's introductory press conference. He said, we've done everything we've can to possibly screw this kid up. We've been mm-hmm. through three head coaches, four offensive coordinators, and no consistency in the offensive line. Now, yep. I will tell you the last two, last game, the offensive line, offensive line played a little bit better than they did against Dallas. But during the Dallas game, the interior part of the offensive line failed Daniel Jones. And Daniel Jones ended up getting sacked six times. Now, there's the one thing that Ryan and I have had this conversation about a lot, JC. And it's and it's something that I'm really sticking with. And Giants fans, um, I don't want them to get fooled by the schedule. Because I know you look at some of these teams that, uh, you know, you have Detroit who's, who's struggled in the past. Jacksonville, even though they're playing better now, has struggled in the past. The simple fact of the matter is, Right now, this is an evaluation period for this team. This is this is not looking to be the Cincinnati Bengals from last year, going from four wins to go to the Super Bowl. D- uh, Dable and Sean are looking at everybody and saying, okay, who are the foundation pieces that we're going to bring in for the following years? What like Who do we have to replace and who are we going to keep as our foundation pieces? The real question with Daniel Jones is not what is he doing right now? Is there hope in place that he's going to be able to evolve even more to be the man for this team, to lead this team back to the Super Bowl? And I think that's the real question for Daniel Jones uh, for, you know, as far as his evaluation process. Well, the team that we have now, I don't care who's playing quarterback. I don't think we have the roster to Mm -hmm. make a playoff run when i say playoff run we could possibly make it into the playoffs possibly we got to handle dallas we probably got to get one of those eagles games we got to handle the commanders when we play them like we got to do well in our division which i feel like we can get dallas philly's gonna be tough we can get the commanders right and now you know we, we we see how things go possibly slip into the playoffs but to play playoff teams like like san fran right san fran's figuring out like, look, okay, we tried this kid. Jimmy may, may not have looked great when we started playing with him early, but we know how Jimmy G is, and we yeah. got Jimmy G back to where we yeah. know how Jimmy G plays. And it's so crazy with San Fran. I know we had a segue, but I got a lot of guys that are San Fran fans, and I'm like, man, I wish I had a quarterback that didn't throw picks and lose the ball all the time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, just manages the game, you know? Like, you know, I we think- can't. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, but Jimmy Garoppolo is must see TV, man. Yeah, you, for you sure. just you just want to watch it because you don't know if he's going to throw a pick six. I remember one one play in the playoffs last year. I just remember who it was. I remember he threw a pass. It bounced off somebody else's hands and it landed into his teammates' hands and he scored a touchdown. I'm sitting there saying, "This guy's the luckiest the SOB luckiest. I've ever seen in my life." Yeah, look, <laughs> he's the, team, the the point I was trying to make, which I kind of <laughs> lost it, was look at San Fran's team. Yeah. Look at the mm-hmm. roster around yeah. him. Mm-hmm. Debo Samuels is top five players in the NFL. When right. that dude touches the ball, he can run the ball. He can get on a jet sweep. He can catch it down the field. He can go up and moss a guy. Like, the guy is tremendous. Sterling Shepard, possibly a close player like that. These guys have potential, but they never did it how Debo did it. You mm-hmm. know, we have guys that have potential. San Fran have guys that did it and that are yeah. doing it. You know, and we got to get out the way of where is this? Oh, potentially could do this. What are you doing now? Right. How are you playing right now? And Daniel Jones, he's this is his fourth year. Like, how much improvement has we actually seen from him? Yeah. Because well, remember his rookie year, Ryan? Yeah. He was kind of good. Like, when I yeah. say kind of good, yeah. he had us like, all right, this is the guy Do for it. us. Mm-hmm. And then the second year, we're like, okay. Third Danny year, guns. we're like, yeah. Mm. Mm. Right, and then now we're like, we're sitting here like, what do we got? Right, you, know? <laughs> you shouldn't have that question for four years. Right, right. Years. Well, Mara was right. We did everything that we could to make sure that nobody really knows what we've got in Daniel Jones. Right? How many? Uh, it was what three, three head coaches, four offensive systems. I mean, like Randy said. And so, I mean, is it even possible this year to really know who we've got? And they've got a very hard job ahead of them in the front office to make a determination about what that's what the future is going to look like if we do or don't hang on to Daniel Jones. Right? I mean, he's got. He's got an amazing opportunity in front of him to prove himself this year, but it's a very difficult situation because it's the first time in this offense. It's probably a more complicated offense than he's had in the past with all the pre-snap motions and all the shifts and all that kind of stuff. Um, And so, I mean, you got to wonder if he's even in a fair situation to him for them to adequately evaluate what he's got, given the holes in the line in front of him and all that kind of stuff. That said, if he's who we think he is, he ought to be able to make some place through that, right? He he did it in Chicago. Um, you know, he did it against Carolina. He used his legs. He was able to get out and run for his life if he needed to. He shouldn't have to do that. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, he will have an opportunity to show us who he is. And quite frankly, gentlemen, the next four games, they're against some tougher opponents yeah. than we have faced in the past. Yeah. This is what's going to show us who he can be if everybody else around him can play up to their level as well. Well, I I know we all, we all kind of are crucial on him, but Mm -hmm. that's what happens when you play quarterback for the New York Giants, right? Yeah. And I'm going to give him his, I'm going to give him his due. Now his ball handling last week, Mm -hmm. elite, Mm -hmm. elite me playing linebacker. Right. And we talked about a whole bunch of different things of, how like he can really sell the fake and it's not just him it's with the offensive line yeah would say Quan actually you know taking the fake it's a collective effort but he put the extra yeah. icing on the top a couple you of know, those were beautiful he, he stuck his hand in his <laughs> gut right <laughs> his right hand looked like he gave the ball he let his right hand go back like he gave the ball sold away it as a linebacker yeah I'm looking through the offensive line if it's run or pass read, right? I'm looking through to see the mesh point. I can't not honor that run fake. I can't yep. not do it. I have to go with it. And he <laughs> sold it so much that it happened, what, four times? I think yeah. Four, yeah, at least three or four, yeah. That's yep. how good of a fake it was, bro. Yeah. He did the same fake. Ugh, stuck it in his gut and let that hand kind of like – Look, like when you're a defender and you see that hand, like he doesn't have the ball. Right, right. You know, he, I'm, I, can you even hear me? I'm over speaking. Yeah, oh, it's, no, all I got it's all good. We got you. <laughs> Sorry, we I get a little you. animated. My seat got wheels on it, so I can move around. <laughs> um, he faked out the cameraman a couple of times. Cameraman was all on Saquon, and he was running That's the how you know he did a good right? job. That's what I'm saying. Because those cameramen awesome. are great at Good at what great. they do. <laughs> 
Uh, guys, I, I also have the injury report. I don't know for for this upcoming mm-hmm. weekend. Um, I think there's is this more from today. This, this is, from is today? today. This is today's injury report. Uh, going from the bottom to the top of the Giants. Uh, Leonard Williams was uh, limited participation. Darius Tony did not practice at all. And what's mm-hmm. even more amazing to me, and I've said this to Ryan multiple times, I see him out there and he's he's moving around. So that's fine. I just don't know what the problem is. I really, uh, you know, they have him listed as a hamstring. The hammy, but, right? Yeah. Yeah. They have him listed as hamstring, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Wandell Robinson, limited participation. Evan Neal, limited participation. Um, Fabian uh, Maru, limited participation. Nick McLeod, limited participation. Daniel Jones, limited participation. Tyra Taylor did not practice. Mm-hmm. Um, as, did he go through the concussion protocol? Have they? He's, he's still in it. He's still, he's still in, in it. it. He's he was the in. first person I seen when I walked in the building today. I, yeah. I seen him when I walked in. I was like, "You good? You doing okay?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm good." <laughs> he's like, he took a shot. Look, I'm a I'm a Tyrod fan. I love him. Like, sure. I met him at uh, uh, Victor Cruz's camp years ago. You know, every time I see him, it's always love. You know, that's you know being around the league for a while. You know, you get to see guys and stuff. And so seeing him in New York was like, okay, good. We got a solid backup. Yep. Possibly yep. could push Daniel Jones for the starting job. I love it. And then mm-hmm. when he came in the game, I said, man, look, we got a, we got Tyrod and we got a solid backup. And yep. when he threw that ball deep, I'm like, yeah. Even though it was a pick, I like it, though. Yeah. I like that. Let's go yeah. down the field. Dude, you saw the spin move he put on that oh, guy, too, we put on him the back? In the it was nasty. He put him in the blender. <laughs> it was <laughs> awesome. There's one thing that I can tell you, and I, I've mentioned this to Ryan multiple times. There's a difference between having Daniel and Tyrod on the field. Because Tyrod, well, Daniel sits in the pocket a little bit to see what's going to develop. Whereas Tyrod looks left and right one time each time. He'll, look, he'll just do one quick look around, and he takes off. And his main thing when he takes off is he doesn't go this way. He's going straight, straight ahead. South. So even if he can gain two yards, he's getting those two yards. And there's a major difference between the two of those guys. And that's something that's a real positive with Tyra. Yeah. I think Daniel Jones, with, with that being said, I think I've seen some improvement the last two yeah. weeks in terms of being decisive and running. Yep. Like, it wasn't like, should I run, should I run? He's like, I'm running it. And he <laughs> takes it and he's deceptively fast. Yeah. He's deceptively fast. Like, he's... He might be really fast. Remember, like they had him clocked in at like 21 miles per hour. <laughs> I don't know if it was the one where he fell down. Remember the one he fell down? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. He was like <laughs> running too fast for himself. <laughs> but he's deceptively fast. And if he can keep that decisiveness about tucking the ball and running, yeah. he's going to have some opportunities, you know, and he's a bigger guy. He just has to learn not to take them damn shots. I don't care how big you are. Cam Newton. Cam Newton now weighing about 30 pounds. Cam mm-hmm. Newton got destroyed. Remember, he was getting smacked up. Beat up. He was getting smacked up. You know why? Because people were like, I can't hit that big dude. He's not, he's not going down. He's not sliding. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna hit him. And he's the quarterback. I can knock him out the game legally. All right, listen. If this thing with Daniel Jones doesn't work, I think there's a guy by the name of Chad Powers who I think would be an excellent quarterback hey, for the Giants. Listen, <laughs> think fast, run fast. <laughs> hey, by the way, How awesome great, was that? great That's reaction. Fantastic. Great reaction by Eli Manning when they asked him about it. He's like, I, I appreciate him wearing my shirt, but I'm not going to wear a Saquon shirt. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, of course, I see Eli walking through the tunnel after the game, and I, I said, what's up, Chad Powers? And he's like, yeah, just Chad. like that. Fast Chad, that. baby. Fast, Fast Chad. Chad. Um, okay, so let's go real quick around to finish up here with uh, predictions for this upcoming weekend. 9 30 a.m. So, Ryan, after you make your eggs in the morning, you can yes. definitely watch the Giants and Wakey uh, Wakey. Wakey Wakey, watch some football. Um, you know, JC, let's start with you. What, what do we got for this weekend against the Green Bay Packers? And by the way, if you decided you wanted to come out of retirement one time to, to, just, to to hit Aaron out, just to hit Aaron Rodgers, I'd love you even more for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, even though I, I've got him on the ground a couple of times, I've never beaten him. And I've, uh, played, him, mm. I've played him on every team I think I've been on. <laughs> <laughs> I've never beaten him. Maybe not the Buccaneers, but I've I've never beaten this dude. Um, he He is an elite elite quarterback and and this is what we see from elite quarterbacks right no matter how they look early in the season they start to figure it out tom brady is one of them 
Aaron Rodgers is another one. Even Mahomes. Mahomes mm -hmm. looked a little shaky last year in the beginning of the season, right? He not looking shaky right now. Aaron Rodgers not looking shaky right now. He's yeah. as dangerous as he is. He's what these elite quarterbacks do, right? These The teams cannot stay the same year in and year out, right? The salary cap prevents all of that from happening, right? So early in the season, you're without the best receiver in the league. I'm speaking about Green Bay, right? Mm -hmm. Devontae Adams. You got to figure out who are these guys? Are they my guys? Are they dogs? You got to <laughs> figure that out, right? Aaron Rodgers is getting after them guys, right? They're responding to him and they're playing well for him. Yeah. We don't have that here with us. Daniel Jones don't possess that yet. Maybe it's because he's not, you know, found himself quite yet and what his maximum potential could be. Maybe that's it. But like the reason why Tom Brady is the GOAT is not because his arm strength. Right. It's not because he's just a prolific passer of the football because he's not even top five in the league right now in being the ability to throw the football, right? Mm -hmm. Accuracy is probably up there. Decision-making is probably top-notch. Athleticism, bottom two in the league, mm -hmm. right? But the reason why he's elite, just like LeBron, he makes people around him better. Mm -hmm. People will go to Tampa, take less money, and become a better player and have like a 33% chance of winning the Super Bowl because Tom Brady's on your team. It's insane. It's insane. Aaron Rodgers is that type of quarterback. He ignites the whole team. Look, I'm not scared of people, but I am scared and I'm fearful because you, when you're fearful, you can do things to protect yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And the Giants need to be fearful of Aaron Rodgers. When he scrambles to his right, he's dangerous. When he scrambles to his right, the receivers in Green Bay, this has been taught for them for years. And I've played on several teams with Bill Belichick coaching, with Coughlin coaching, with Sean Payton coaching, and you can't stop this dude when he's on. He's one of those guys like LeBron and those NBA guys, KD. When he's on, he's unstoppable, right? We need to get him frustrated right away. Mm -hmm. Hit him on the ground, send some blitzes at him that we've never done switch it up from man whatever we did last year on third and three uh, excuse me last week on 33 switch it up you know say give them different looks we had a new blitz for the the uh the packers game when i was playing for the saints that we opened the game up with that we've never ever showed on film we designed it because we knew it was gonna work like these coaches need to go ahead and go back to the playground and go ahead and on the dirt, you know, Draw some X's on, and the, on the football, <laughs> on the football, and literally create yeah. blitzes that goes against this offense because the first time that you run it, it's going to be they never saw it before, and you can mm -hmm. catch them by surprise. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised teams don't do that a lot more often. I'm so happy. And this is with Greg Williams crazy ass. Remember Greg Williams? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this oh, is yeah. Greg Williams crazy ass. He's crazy, but oh, he's yeah. a good coach. He's crazy. He's a good coach. You got to throw something different at Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. Number one priority, though, you think it might be Aaron? It's not. It's the other Aaron. That's his name, right? What's the running back's name? Jones. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. I was right. Aaron Jones. You better stop him. He's averaging like seven yards a carry. Mm -hmm. You better stop the run first because if you don't stop the run, let me tell you something. If the Giants don't stop the run over in was it Tottenham Stadium? It will be a blowout. Yep. I'm yeah, telling bad. you. Because the way yeah. Aaron Rodgers is playing, the way the young receiver is playing, Dobbs and then Lazard and then the tight end, the way they're playing, if you can get that, the, first of all, they have the, the best complimentary backs in the league with a slasher running back and then a big bruiser running back, it could be a long day for a lot of people. So the Giants defensively have to start fast. Offensively, we have to score points. Saquon, give him the ball early and often. And yep. Daniel Jones have to convert on third downs. And we and, have to do these things. And Aaron Rodgers needs to be going into the fourth quarter behind because he is not a come-from-behind quarterback. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, JC, but Eli actually has more come-from-behind victories than Aaron Rodgers does in the fourth quarter. Well, he also has more rings in him, too. So Yeah. How about that? 
Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I, I, and if you're a Giants fan, you can walk away knowing you got one more than Aaron Rodgers, yeah. uh, which makes me very happy, by the way. Uh, all right, so let's uh, so let's get a prediction from you as far as the uh, the score. What do you got? What do you got? <sighs> I know this might be painful because I know I know yeah. your heart's in it right now. Yeah. Look, I think I don't I don't think the Giants have the team right now. I think to beat the Green Bay Packers, I feel like they're figuring themselves out earlier than I thought they would have from how week one went in Green Bay and they got blown out. I think they're figuring themselves out really early. So I think they have an identity and who they are and they're a running football team. They have one of the best quarterbacks in the league that run the football, right? Yeah. We are just a running team, you know, going against, we're like one dimension. They're multi-dimensional, right? The, we don't have the advantage. This is what I'm looking at. But we get those young kids, Ojolari, Thibodeau, hopefully Leo plays, Dexter Lawrence sack dance last week. I'm, on, I'm here for all of that. If those guys, traditionally, New York Giants football, the D-line, has made other quarterbacks look subpar. And that is the culture of the Giants. Hard-nosed football, making plays on defense. Linebackers flying around, but the D-line disrupting the game. And we have the guys to do it. Yeah, they're a little banged up right now, but look, they're getting more and more away from when they got hurt. They're starting to figure out how to move with these knee braces on. And I feel like they're going to show up. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. So if I got to call it anything, let's go 17 to 24 Green Bay. Okay. Ryan? It's, it's funny because this is, it's either going to be, you know, 17, 15 Giants or 35, 14 Packers, right? It's a matter of whether or not, you know, they're able to get going early. If, if Aaron Rodgers gets going early and the wheels come off, then it's going to be, like you said, JC, it's going to be a very long day for the Giants. If, however, the defensive line can get it together and really put pressure on and frustrate Aaron Rodgers from the get-go, we figure out the formula, we make it happen, play in and play out, we actually have a chance, right? We can put the ball in Saquon's hands. If he has another day like the week, like he's been having, uh, then, you know, he gives us a good chance to win. If Daniel can manage the ball, if it's going to be Daniel, I'm assuming it is, um, then we might have a shot at it. You know, it, it really, it all depends. I, I really think it all depends on how the first quarter comes out. Yeah. Um, if I were a betting man, I, I hate to say it, it, it it's probably going to end up 35, 14 oh. <laughs> Packers. That's, it's just, I don't want to say that, man. I don't want that to be my guess, but uh, I just have a feeling that that might be the way it goes. And, and from my perspective, one of the big things that see people seem to keep forgetting, and this has been a problem going all the way back to maybe the second half of 2016 all the way to now, the Giants have had a very difficult time putting points on the board. Um, you know, I think, I think the, Ryan, the stat I gave you the other day, I think it was like 11 or 12 out of the last 20 games under 20 points. Yep. You know, and so yep. that's, to me, that's a, that's a, that's a, a warning sign. I, I don't have that exact number, but it's something in that range. Um, and even last week they put, you know, so, or this season so far, they've had, 21 points against Tennessee and 20 points against the, uh, yeah. the bears low scoring, so, ugly, scrappy wins. Yeah. And, and so my, that's my biggest concern against going against a team that could put points on the board yeah. is not having enough points. I'm not worried, worried about the defense because wink is a genius, a defensive yeah, genius sure. and he can get young players to run through a wall for him. That's not going to be my concern, but if your offense can't stay on the field to give your defense enough of time to rest and to get their get to win together, it's going to be a problem. And this offense has struggled. And there's not only that, but special teams at times has struggled. So right now your defense, which has been playing so well, you just can't keep them on the field. I'm looking at 28, 14. Uh, and, and that by the way, has also been my other concern with Daniel has been, can he muster up to get enough points on the board with this offense? Mm -hmm. And that's a conversation we'll have next week. Um, I've talked to the quarterback coach multiple times about what Daniel's leash is. And it's not because he was being coy. He didn't want to give me an answer. It's because they don't really know yeah. what his leash is because it's too early. 
yeah, like if he's putting points on the board, but the team is losing, is that enough? If he's looking good in losses, is that enough? If he's struggling in wins, okay, do you keep him out there? It's almost like what we were just talking about, Jimmy G. Jimmy G is winning games, but it's a train wreck when he's winning games. You know what I mean? So it's like you're, if you're a San Francisco 49er fan, every single time he takes a snap, you're doing this because you just like because yeah. you know something's going to happen, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. I I just am very concerned about the offense and the length of time they're on the field. They have not been able to take advantages of opportunities. Um, I don't remember if it was the Chicago game. So guys, forgive me for this, for bringing this part up and not having the exact um, the week it was. It was either against uh, Carolina or it was against um, Chicago where they muffed a punt right in the beginning of the game and had the ball right in enemy territory. It was Carolina. And, it was against Carolina, and we only put three points on the board, and we were inside yeah. the twenty. That's you're, you're, I'm sorry, you 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 have that type of momentum to start the game right off. You have to put the foot on the throat right away, and they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. They didn't do Dan, it. Daniel Jones, he he's not a good enough quarterback for us to not play complimentary football. Right, defense yep. has to play well and limit their mistakes and penalties. Special teams, guys. They got to play better. They're giving up a lot of uh, return yards, especially on punt returns. They're like 16 yards per punt return. And now you know these punt returners are just like, oh, yeah. Like, that gives you <laughs> extra confidence because you don't have yeah. a lot of chances to return kicks sure. in the NFL anymore, you yeah. know? But for some reason, the Giants are just letting them go. Yeah, the blood is off, in the water. You know, mm-hmm. and I love the special teams coach. I seen him today. I said, Coach, I'll run through a wall for you if I wasn't my, my Achilles wasn't torn, you know. <clears throat> but they have to play complimentary football. They have yeah. to do it. And luckily, we've had a lot of plays on on all sides of the ball, negatively and positively, and the ball kind of bounces our way sometimes. Look, mm-hmm. as you start stacking these wins up, you start seeing like, okay, we might be a good team. You know, it's really early to find that out right now. You know, uh, there's things that I've heard over the, over the years, and I think I'm going to say it the best way I could say it. Bad teams find, find ways to lose games, yeah, right. and good teams find ways, find to, ways win to win. You know, yep. and that's not proven until the end of the season. When you look back, oh, Giants were in, you know, eight games within three points. Did they win them, though? Yeah, Did they win I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen the ball bounce the other way. This year, they seem to be bouncing our way and we're finding right. ways to win. How many seasons in the past have those balls gone the other way? And we've been on the losing end of it and it's just been heartbreaking, right? They show you the ability and it just rips it right out of your heart. Yeah. Well, JC, but, you went you went through that in 2015 where you had a lot of close games where you ended up um, falling, falling short. But then in 2016, you look at the Saints game in the beginning of the year, you look at the Baltimore game game you look at some of those other games that you had it was totally opposite from the year before where the ball bounced in your favor in 2016 but not in 2015 where you yeah. lost i think i think you know you look at back to the patriot game where landon bit of inter- what, uh, sealed that game with the uh, interception yep. on brady you, you had the carolina game where you guys bounced back after being down big that was the josh norman odell game where you guys came back after being down 20 something points you know and- and we speak a lot about that 2016 team. Offensively, we weren't that great all that year. No. Defensively, we were really good. Fact. The year prior, it was vice versa. Offensively, Eli had a heck of a year. Young Odell catching one-handed passes out there. Talented roster. Offensively. And then what did they do that offseason? Damon Snacks Harrison, Olivier Vernon, Jack mm-hmm. Rabbit, signed Eli uh, Eli. Uh, Apple. That kid, Eli Apple. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to talk about him. <laughs> I know, that damn kid, Eli Apple. Hey, I heard his mom was an excellent baker. That's all I think I have to say. <laughs> right. But, and this is, what it, this is what it comes down to. The reason why we were good in 2016 was because our D-line. That's what it was. It yep. was our D-line. The reason why the Giants are going to have success this year will be because of the D line. That's where it all starts. That it is. Yeah. Think about all the championship teams in the past. Hey, man. Lawrence Taylor was a D lineman. He wasn't a linebacker. He wasn't off the ball. He was rushing the passer. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, and I love seeing Wink use that same kind of system, right? I mean, you see guys like O'Shane lining up a little back, Jihad Ward's lining up a little back, looking like he's a linebacker, but the dude's 280 pounds. You know what yeah. I mean? That's awesome. I like those stuff. two guys too, man. Yeah. I like Ward. I, I like how he plays. I like Ziminez. He's he's having yeah. a good year this year. He Starting is so exci- he is so excited too. I asked him right after the game. I'm like, you've been here through a lot of losing, man. But how's it feel three one? He's like, I'm excited. And then I and of course the next question I have to ask him, what did you think of the fireworks? I said I was excited about that too. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, real quick, JC, let's let everybody know where they can find you on social media. Yeah, on on Instagram on Jade underscore 52, on Twitter, Jacob is 52. I got to get my Twitter presence up. I'm on Twitter. I'm really not active. You guys are on Twitter. Start tweeting me. I'm going to start tweeting a little more. I got to get active. I'm doing radio, you know, I'm doing podcasts with you. Like, we got to, I got to step my game up on Twitter. I I think once we step up our Twitter game, maybe we'll even and uh we'll, our social game as a whole we'll also do some ask jc questions we'll, we'll yeah. open it up we'll open ask it up. we'll open it up and have some uh, ask jc questions uh i'm on uh, randy bsp on both instagram and twitter and uh of course backsportspage.com and you know uh this is the first episode and the you know, first of many and we're gonna really have some fun and really go take you inside the giants like uh, no one else is going to be able to do between JC and I being at the facility and at the games. We're going to really take everybody inside. And, you know, uh, JC, I appreciate you going to town. We were talking about doing a half hour. We ended up over an hour in. But, you know, so what? First, I got to talk. I got to make sure my daughter is in the bed. She's, to be in the bed. She's probably yeah. up like, I hear him talking. She's probably on her phone. Like, <laughs> yeah. around. Yeah. You, know what the, you know what they always say, though? When you have a season premiere or you have a premiere or a show, you're supposed to go longer than yeah. everything Do it else. Right. It's the pilot. It's the pilot That's episode. Right. Yeah, it's right? the pilot That's right. episode, baby. All right, guys. So we will see you next week. Big Blue Report. That's Jonathan Casillas. That's Ryan Darlington. I'm Randy Zellian. We'll see you next time. Mm.